At this point, you completed storing the value of the slider into a variable and displaying that in an alert. That's great, but you can improve upon it a little. What if later on you decide to change the initial value of the slider in the storyboard to something different, like one or a hundred? Well, then you need to go and remember to also update the initial value in the view controller as well. Take it from me, this kind of thing is really hard to remember especially as your project becomes bigger and you have a lot more view controllers in it, or if you haven't looked at this code in weeks. There's got to be a better way, and that's what we'll be doing in this section. And along the way, you'll learn about one of the fundamental techniques in iOS development, connecting outlets. Let's dive in. In viewcontroller.swift, you have this method here, view did load. This is called by UIKit as soon as the view controller loads its user interface from the storyboard file. At this point, the view controller isn't visible yet, so it's a really good place to set instance variables to their proper initial values. I'll delete this comment here and try something. I'll take this line from slider moved, taking the current value to the rounded slider value, and I'll paste it up to view did load. Now, if I try to build this, I get an error. It says use of unresolved identifier slider. Why does this happen? Well, remember, after slider move ends, at the end of this method, it's gone. So of course we can't access it here. Now we solved this before by making a variable to store the current value. We need to do something very similar. We need to create a variable to store the slider so we can access it from view did load or any other method we might want. How do we do this? Back in the lecture on strings and variables, I mentioned how each variable has a certain lifetime known as its scope. The scope of a variable depends on where in the program you define that variable. There are three possible scope levels in Swift. The first is global scope. These variables exist for the duration of the app and are available anywhere. Second, there's instance scope. Your current value variable is an example of a variable in instance scope. These objects are alive for as long as the object that contains them is alive. So in this case, your current value variable is owned by the view controller. So as long as the view controller is alive, so will your variable. Third and finally, there's local scope. Objects with local scope, such as the parameter of your slider moved method, only exist for the duration of that method. As soon as execution leaves that method, then those objects are no longer available. Let's take a look at the top part of show alert. Because the message, alert, and action variables are created inside this method, they have local scope. They only come into existence when the show action method is performed, and when that method completes, those variables are gone. The current value variable, however, lives forever. Well, at least as long as the view controller does, and in this case, the view controller will be alive as long as the app is open. This type of variable is often referred to as an instance variable because its scope is the same as the instance of the object that it belongs to. As a general rule of thumb, you wanna use instance variables for when you wanna keep objects around from one action method to the next. Let's see if we can use this new knowledge to solve the problem that we've encountered. Okay, so let's create a variable for this slider. We'll use the IB outlet special keyword so that the storyboard editor can detect this variable. We'll type in week. Don't worry what that means right yet. We'll cover that later in this course. We'll type in var for variable. We'll name the variable slider, put a colon, and then the type of it is going to be UI slider and put an exclamation mark at the end. Don't worry what that means quite yet either. Now if we hit command B, the app will actually build okay, but if we run it, we get an error here. It says X bad instruction. The reason this is happening is because although we created a variable for the slider, we didn't set it to anything yet. So how do we set the slider to the slider that we've created in our storyboard? We do that by making a connection in the storyboard editor. Just like you've connected actions that the user takes on controls like button taps or slider move to methods, you can also connect the controls themselves to variables, which is what we'll be doing now. To do this, just open up the storyboard, and right click on the slider. You can see all of the list of actions on the slider. This is the same thing as what you can do in the connection inspector. I just wanted to show you a different way. But there's another thing down here called new referencing outlet. That means how the code refers to this slider. So you can click the plus button here and drag up to the view controller right here, or as a shortcut for the list dragging this little yellow icon right here as a shortcut to the view controller and you can choose the variable that you've added here. It detects this because you put the IB outlet keyword on it, slider. So just click that. And now just to test that it works, I'm going to set the initial value of the slider to 25 instead. And now I'm going to run this. And now I can tap hit me and nice, it says the value is 25 and I didn't have to remember to change my code. 
And now just to keep things clean, it doesn't make sense to keep the value to 50 anymore, but obviously that doesn't match. However, the current value does need something to initialize it. So a best practice is just to set it to zero. And then when the app starts up, this line right here will set it to the correct initial value.